On the 11th of December 2001, China joined the World Trade Organization. Today, we consider the profound impacts that this has had upon economies throughout the world, leading to such wild disconnects that we see before us today. So let's dive on in. Now, this channel provides global macro insights and champions the importance of sound money in a world gone crazy, so please do consider subscribing. Despite much concern among the Chinese Communist Party that joining the WTO and abiding by international rules regarding trade would reduce the Communist Party's uh, power, China were desperate to join the club, notably as a result of the uh, great uncertainty following the massacre in Tiananmen Square in 1989, together with the subsequent collapse of the Soviet Union and, perhaps most notably, the need to generate additional impetus for the economy courtesy of export-orientated growth. Of course, the Asian financial crisis had threatened the export-orientated nature of the growth Indeed, the economy had been growing rapidly under Deng Xiaoping's original reforms from the late 1970s and then began their accession to the WTO in 1985. Yet the growth rate began to fall markedly uh, to the, uh, from the mid-1990s and as the Asian financial crisis took hold in 97, people began to question the concept of Asian uh, exceptionalism. In addition, China was in the midst of reforming many loss-making state-owned enterprises, which was having a dramatic impact upon employment levels. And so when China finally joined the WTO in 2001, the belief was that the country would begin to westernize. Indeed, it was believed by the likes of uh, Bill Clinton that the invisible hand of the market would rise up and replace the iron fist of the Communist Party as the private sector would gradually erode China's uh, public sector. The big problem that the uh, accession caused was that the US and other nations could now no longer use uh, accession to the WTO as a key leverage tool to influence Beijing's policy. So it thereby greatly undermined the West's negotiations with uh, the country as they actually joined the WTO. Nevertheless, it was expected that China's economy would see a dramatic increase in the intensity of domestic competition as Western firms entered the marketplace. The far higher productivity of Western firms was anticipated to mean that China's labor costs at around a twentieth of those uh, seen in the West uh, at the time would be negated. In turn, this would enable the US and others to uh, greatly improve their trade position uh, with the Chinese. Of course, uh, we all know neither of these factors took hold, uh, as we can see in this chart, which just highlights the deterioration of the trade account for the US. But in addition, the assumption regarding the greater efficiency of Western firms over their Chinese counterparts never actually considered the fact that capital goods and technology are geographically mobile. That being the case, it was always going to be labor costs that determined where multinationals would choose to locate production. When capital goods and technology were transferred to Chinese uh, factories, productivity began to rise rapidly. In fact, such were the gains secured by the Chinese firms that many Western producers were forced to relocate or go out of business. Some countries did well out of this. For instance, Germany was able to export goods vital to the booming Chinese manufacturing sector while Australia and other commodity uh, producers were able to escape the impacts of the 2008 downturn as Chinese demand for commodities boomed. Yet the likes of Mexico, who had as a result of the NAFTA Free Trade Agreement been uh, really expecting to harmonize its living standards with those of uh, its North American com uh, compatriots, Canada and America, failed to see such improvements as the manufacturing boom headed eastwards. As China's development uh, started to accelerate, they began to distribute the growth more evenly. 
spreading economic development further afield as proceeds from the export sector uh, were channeled into uh, domestic infrastructure that was uh, built on a truly vast scale. This was uh, accompanied by rapid urbanisation as around 20 million people migrated to the cities every year. This enormous shift to the global supply chain led to disinflation in consumer goods and deteriorating trade positions in the West. At the same time, Western central banks' inflation targeting led to collapsing real wages, while greater financialization fed increasing debt and dramatic asset bubbles. Of course, the use of quantitative easing from 2008 onwards prompted uh, China to really start hoarding gold as their trust in the dollar faltered. And so the key points that we have seen as a consequence of the last 20 years of failed Western foreign policy include uh, centralization of power among Western multinational corporations, uh, many who have relied uh, more upon China's cheap labor rather than the outright need to actually innovate. They've become immensely powerful in terms of their lobbying power uh, to the extent that they represent almost a country in their own right. And this has contributed to a persistent weakening of economic societies, hardest felt in the former manufacturing hubs, which are now rife with the societal costs of deindustrialization. But perhaps most importantly, China's accession to the WTO and its subsequent rapid development have now, for many in the West, legitimized a totalitarian regime as a credible model to that of traditional liberal Western democracies. Thus, when we saw the outbreak of the uh, virus over 18 months ago, we saw China's response of immediate and draconian uh, lockdowns uh, to be enacted. Subsequently, this became the accepted uh, model that almost all countries then followed. In the eyes of uh, British broadcaster Andrew Neil, what we've seen since is an apparent new Chinese-style world order taking shape. Whether this originated uh, strictly from China itself or, uh, or been influenced heavily by Davos is, of course, much debated, but is ultimately digital servitude. So now we hold the line as those who refuse to be governed into a new totalitarian society. Thanks so much for joining me. Do hit the like button and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.